The theme that I want to bring to you today is on the dead, Marana. It is as undeniable as that the earth moves around the sun. Death comes for each of us or rather. This body of mine, this body of yours, they are as impermanent as a flower's bloom. And yet it seems we can be called off guard by the occurrence of this change. There is never a good time for it, and we associate with it heightened levels of suffering. Look for those whose time has come and for those around them who care for them. In a twist to an old bumper sticker slogan, Bhava or existence is suffering, Dukkha, and then you die. It is much easier to have a chuckle over this when it is in the abstract. It is still hard to accept when it is someone you care for, someone you respect or admire, someone you work closely with and with whom you imagine you would have many future encounters or experiences. It is not just the impermanence anicca of someone that we must accept. It is also our own. And so we know that just as thoughts arise and fall, we all come and go. I want to call. From Arya Pariyasana Sutta Majjhimanikai, the Buddha says, Monks, there are these two searches. The ignoble search and the noble search. Arya Pariyasana, Anarya Pariyasana. And what is the, is the ignoble search? Anarya Pariyasana. When a person being subject himself to birth seeks happiness in what is likewise subject to birth, being subject himself to aging, illness, death, sorrow, defilement, he or she seeks happiness in what is likewise subject to aging, illness, death, sorrow, defilement. And what is the noble search, Arya Pariyasa? When a person himself being subject to birth, seeing the drawbacks of birth, seeks the unborn, unexcel rest from the yoke, unbinding himself being subject to aging, illness, death, sorrow, defilement, seeing the drawbacks of aging, illness, death, sorrow, defilement, seeks the agingless, illnessless, deathless, sorrowless, undefiled, unexcel, rest from the yoke, unbinding, this is the noble search, Ariya Pariyasa. I hope we are all on this noble search. We are supposed to be in this noble search, Arya Pariyasa. For we know that we do not escape. We are not excluded from the three characteristics to which everything in this universe is subject, anicca, dukkha, and anatta, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and not so. I would say not self, that's the better way. Anicca, the characteristic of change. We are not the same as we were yesterday. We are not the same as we were 10 minutes ago. Biology teaches us that this body is a complex organism in constant flux with the air we breathe, the food we eat, and our bodily processes. The characteristic of change, anicca, permeates everything and is the fact behind impermanence. Then dukkha, second, dissatisfaction or unsatisfactoriness. Experiences and things do not provide satisfaction. The general state of things. This constant change, the impermanence, unless our nature is that of someone who on the noble search. This is all experience as dissatisfaction or unsatisfactoriness. And finally, anatta, or I would say not self, as we are these biological things that change day by day, who have thoughts that arise and fall, in a constant ebb and flow of impermanence. Anything that we think of as a self, atta, is an illusionary thought, not based in reality. This is one of the hardest things to truly understand. It uh, requires an understanding, not as an observer who understands something that is observed. It requires understanding that not only is there no observer, there's nothing to be observed. These three characteristics are everywhere evident and are especially evident on days such as uh, our daily life. They are not, however, a sign of something amiss. They are part of a natural order. Our goal is to understand this order so we may bring clarity and relief to our thinking and to those around us. The Buddha said that birth and death are related. And the most important thing between these two epic moments is to have lived. 
to the best of our potential, a life full of wonder. Cultivating compassion and wisdom, karuna and panya, and working to help others to do the same are the seeds of a wonderful life. That means we all have to uh, work towards our karuna, compassion, and what you call panya, wisdom. And not even we practice karma and panya, but also we have to uh, cause other people to practice these two in the best possible way. So overall, what I can share as the conclusion is that understand Maranen, death from a higher perspective, deeper perspective. In Buddhism, we have, I would say, a couple ways to look at uh, Maranen. One, you could say uh, marana in the sense of conventional death, samudhi marana. That means we die uh, one day. Uh, this could be the, I would say, the permanent stoppage of your heart. In Abhidhamma we say uh, the, the end of Hadevatu. And we also die every moment. We call it kanita marana, momentary death. Uh, so looking at these two, rather than taking the life as being negative, what we are trying to see is that the life between these two, that means the birth and the death, there is something that we can do, I would say, cultivate wholesomeness, cultivate kusala, and practice metta, karma, mudita, pikka, loving kindness or friendliness, compassion or kindness, and uh, altruistic joy or unselfish joy, and uh, finally, equanimity. So when you practice these four, you understand marana has a bigger bearing rather than an, an I would say, uh, an experience that would cause you to be unhappy. So I would say, try to find your life between jati and marana and be a better person and cultivate wholesomeness as much as possible. Do not be feared at death because death will come to us uh, in whatsoever ways. What we should be feared is whether we could do, uh, whether we could make a life with lots of wholesomeness. Thank you, everybody.